AI technology cannot stand alone. It needs architecture. In a recent Forbes interview, Andrew Ng, one of the world's renowned AI experts, said this. AI technology in isolation is not useful. It needs a lot of customization to figure out exactly how it fits into your business concept. Doing that requires a broad understanding of your company and a reasonably deep understanding of AI. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to share an example of a customer experience that an auto insurance company might want to provide just to illustrate Andrew's statement. Here's a scenario. A customer, so let's call her Amy, trying to avoid a pedestrian who's crossing the road, swerved and crashed her car into a lamppost. Amy's mobile phone detected a sudden stop. Her insurance company, let's name that first up, sends her a text message. Are you okay? If she didn't respond, they'd call 911 to send emergency services to the site. If she did respond, perhaps using her voice, then they would send instructions on what to do next. The accident was automatically detected by machine learning that uses various attributes like the change in the car speed, the location, the local weather condition, the traffic condition, and so on. You can imagine an app like Waze that can do this. Amy's voice was processed by a natural language processing system, also called NLP. She's automatically authenticated based on a voice print that she had stored earlier. Now, since she just had been in an accident, there might be some stress in her voice. So the voice match may not be perfect, but that can use more information for the authentication itself. We know that Amy's phone has not been reported to be stolen, so it's most likely that it is Amy in the accident. Having done that, the responses from first app will be a combination of voice response system for audio and a chat box for text. Amy is then asked to walk around and take a few pictures of the car. She does that and soon after she clicks done, she receives an estimate on the damage right on her phone. She also gets a request whether she would like a tow truck to take the car to the shop and also a request whether she'd like a rental car. The pictures are evaluated by computer vision algorithms to classify the type of damage and machine learning to estimate the damage. If her response is yes to both questions about the rental car and the uh, tow truck, it triggers the tow truck and the rental car to be dispatched. This automated response that sends the dispatches is driven by an expert system that has learned the rules over time may be guided by human operators. The truck comes by and takes the car to the body shop. The rental car company picks up Amy. Once the car is in the repair shop, it starts to fix Amy's car and communicates the statuses of the repair periodically with First Up. First Up runs a smart software agent-based business process management system so that it can notify Amy of the relevant updates. Amy can click on a link in any of those updates and get more details about the progress of the repair. That more detailed information can come from multiple sources like the repair shop, the tow truck shop, the rental car agency, her own agent, and from the company itself first up. And it's all consolidated in a presentable view for Amy. This means that multiple systems have to be integrated using possibly distributed APIs, some of which are on a secure cloud, to provide that exp the experience that we're just talking about. Once the car is fixed, it triggers a series of events so that Amy can get back her car. So payments are completed, the rental car is exchanged for her own car, the claim is closed, and so on. So this orchestration is not necessarily centrally controlled, but is done through a series of message exchanges and the actions that need to be taken based on those messages. 
To make such an orchestration happen, the participating companies have to use an information standard so that they can understand each other's messages. It's like all companies speak the same language. That's a big picture. Now let's focus on just one part of this architecture that relates to estimating the damage on the car. When Amy takes pictures of her crashed car, a set of AI algorithms are triggered on her phone. So here's what happens. In each picture, the car has to be automatically recognized, ignoring the background. This is done by processing the images one at a time by a convolution neural network. Then the background for each image has to be ignored, and that's done by algorithms that use edge detection and histogram thresholding to extract the car from the image and subtract the background. The multiple pictures have to be combined so a 3D model of the car can be constructed. Since Amy's mobile phone doesn't have the processing power for all this, it makes an API request to a high power server at first up. The first up server compares the 3D model to other models of accidents involving single cars and identifies close matches using clustering algorithms. Based on the actual cost of repair of those matched cars, a machine learning algorithm uses linear regression to estimate the repair cost. The result is returned to be displayed on Amy's phone. So you see how in this one part of just estimating the repair, different AI and machine learning algorithms are used. A team of AI and machine learning experts may work on different parts of the process. I've actually simplified the process a lot just to give you the gist of what's happening, just with the estimation part. On top of this, we'll have to figure out how this damage estimation part fits into the full end-to-end -end customer experience that I described earlier, from the time of the accident to the time Amy gets her car back. In other words, we have to manage the work across all this so that the end result is a seamless experience for customers like Amy. Also, this is just one scenario, and there may be many variations of this scenario. What if the accident was between two cars? What if Amy refuses rental car coverage? What if Amy was injured and unable to respond to messages? So we have a lot of what ifs, what ifs, what ifs. This means that when we build this type of customer experience, the architecture has to take into account many things. Who are the people and their roles, the business processes, the kinds of technology that we have to use like AI and the cloud, the data that sensors provide, the data itself and how that's going to be stored and managed, the interaction with different business partners like the rental car company and the tow company, the insurance agents who work for First Up, the cloud services and how that'll be managed, and a whole bunch of other things. And on top of this, this all has to be done in such a way that the architecture can easily handle all the multiple variations of the scenario that can possibly happen. So there you go, an example of where AI cannot simply be deployed in isolation, as Andrew Ng states. Please share your thoughts and thanks for watching.